watching Fox 35 News Plus, streaming on Fox Local. Welcome back into Fox 35 News Plus. I'm Garrett Weimer, and thanks for joining us on this Tuesday morning live on Fox Local and on YouTube. Uh, just a little bit ago, we heard from uh, those involved in the Axiom 4 mission, an upcoming mission that will take astronauts from India, Poland, and Hungary to the International Space Station. It, and it's the first time in more than 40 years uh, that those countries have sponsored space flights. I want to play for you a little bit uh, of the news conference. It's a teleconference uh, that uh, wrapped up just a little bit ago. We're excited to fly Peggy, Shook, Swavash, and Tibor, and more than 60 research projects to the International Space Station in our fourth Dragon launch of 2025. Every human spaceflight mission is unique, but AX4 is particularly special in that Shooks and Swavash will be con conducting the first mission to the space station in history for their respective countries of India and Poland. Additionally, as a woman who's devoted my entire career to the space industry and with four kids of my own, three of them daughters, I'd be remiss to not take a moment to highlight Peggy, the Axiom 4 commander. Peggy will become the third person to fly multiple times on Dragon. This will also be her second time commanding a commercial human spaceflight mission and will add to her standing record for the longest cumulative time in space by an American astronaut, which will have reached nearly 700 days upon completion of this mission. She's also been the commander of the entire ISS not once but twice, has performed 10 spacewalks, and has looked down on Earth from the vantage point of a space shuttle, a Soyuz, a Dragon, and of course ISS. And next week she'll be inducted into the Astronaut Hall of Fame. All I can say is, wow, Peggy, it's an honor to know you and an honor to fly you again on Dragon in a few weeks. Human spaceflight is core to SpaceX's ultimate mission to make life multiplanetary, and flying crew safely is always our top priority. This mission marks our 53rd Dragon mission, our 15th human spaceflight mission to the space station, and our 48th trip to ISS with Dragon if you include both crew and cargo missions. Another exciting note about this mission is that it's on a brand new Dragon. We're excited to add this Dragon, which will soon get its nickname from the crew, so no spoilers today, um, to, to our reliable fleet of crew and cargo carrying spacecraft. Teams are currently completing Dragon's final integration campaign and expect to transport Dragon to our hangar at Pad 39A next week to be mated with the rocket for launch. This will also be the second flight for the Falcon 9 booster supporting this mission, which previously launched a Starlink mission a few weeks ago, which is crazy to hear myself say. I still personally remember years working at SpaceX before landing rockets had ever been done and how wildly excited we were when we first successfully landed our, our first one and then our second and then our third. I still remember the first time we flew a rocket for its second space flight. And when we first started refurbishing and reflying rockets, it would take us months to get through all the hardware inspections and maintenance to be ready to fly again. But here I am nonchalantly saying this rocket flew two dozen Starlink satellites to space a few weeks ago, and it's ready to fly again in a couple weeks to take four humans to the International Space Station. The pace of progress and innovation here is extraordinary. As always, NASA, SpaceX, and Axiom work closely to ensure that all teams and hardware are ready to fly. Hundreds of tests and inspections have already been completed throughout the build and integration process. The crew has completed rigorous training to certify them for their space flight, as Dana mentioned, and multiple flight readiness reviews lie ahead in the coming weeks prior to launch. All of these are opportunities to step back, review the data, look closely at the hardware, and mitigate any risks with the utmost rigor to ensure safety and reliability. Right now, we're targeting Sunday, June 8th at 9, 11 a.m. Eastern for launch, but in the coming weeks, as we complete final reviews and keep an eye on the weather, we'll let you know any adjustments to that plan. A huge thank you to NASA, Axiom Space, India, ESA, Poland, and Hungary for your trust and teamwork as we step together towards the AX4 mission. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. Next up is Sadish Balan, who is the project director for the Indian Space Research Organization. Sadish, you are muted just in case if um, you need to click the button. Yeah, thank you, Alexis. And good morning to all. Uh, AX4 mission is a unique and exciting opportunity uh, for ISRO in international cooperation and collaboration. As a spacefaring nation, human space explorations are very important to us. We have our own Gaganyan program, which aims to build a technical expertise and infrastructure for the for enabling human presence in low Earth orbit. The experience and know-how from AX4 mission are significant to us, and that would feed into our Gaganyan program. 
Our astronaut candidates, Sukanshu Shukla and Prashant Balakrishnan Nair, have been into training since August last year. As mentioned, they have undergone a rigorous training, mission specific, normal and emergency procedures. They have practiced in various simulators and with periodic assessment on physical and psychological. They also got trained in Cologne and Sukuba. Shubhan Swans will be doing a number of microgravity experiments on board. There are seven from India. He would also be participating in other uh, human research program experiments. In addition, there are a couple of uh, STEM demonstrations and lay outreach events to benefit the students' community. This mission has generated a lot of interest in India. There are new domains associated with the human space program. They're multidimensional and diversified, it's like space medicine, physiology, biomedical instruments, training and microgravity experiments. They all have a good potential for growth. So there is a need to enable young space enthusiasts and entrepreneurs to take up this new challenge in space technology. We believe that the missions like AX4 would motivate our young minds to be passionate about space technology. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, back to you and best wishes for the mission. Thank you so much, Sadish. Next up is Sergio Palomberry, who is the mission manager for the European Space Agency. Thank you, Alexis, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. ESA is looking forward to the Axial 4 mission. Uh, the private astronaut missions are a great opportunity for our member states to fly more ESA astronauts and to do more science and technology research on the International Space Station. With Axiom 4 specifically, ESA will be executing 17 science investigations and technological demonstrations, most of which have been developed in cooperation with Poland, specifically for Axiom 4, while others are a continuation of ESA experiments already ongoing on the ISS with expedition astronauts. With this mission, we have also been cooperating with India and with Hungary on several experiments. We are supporting them for the integration and the execution of some experiments and our respective astronauts will execute each other's science. So we have a collaboration that will further increase the science output, both for ESA and for them. And we also have an ambitious education program with several STEM demonstrations and in-flight calls. And like every previous ESA astronaut mission, we think that the mission will inspire the new generations to pursue STEM subjects and maybe space exploration for their career. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Sergio. Next up is Alexandra Bukola, who's the project manager and head of strategy and international cooperation for the Polis Space Agency. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in the airport, uh, actually working on the more on the exploration. But uh, what I wanted to highlight is that this is a very important mission for uh, for Poland. Since uh, 47 years, this is the first time our astronaut uh, will fly, and this is the first time it, uh, he will fly to to the ISS. But it's not only about the flying the astronaut, but it's uh, more uh, about the science. So we are launching 13 Polish experiments uh, to the ISS uh, in a close cooperation with ESA. And uh, here I want to give a big compliments to ESA for all the support uh, we have obtained. It wouldn't be possible without ESA support uh, to, to launch so many uh, Polish experiments and after so many years. As Sergio already mentioned, we also have a rich educational uh, program uh, which is uh, very important to us uh, as this mission is perceived as one of the uh, important milestones uh, to gain the attention and the raise the awareness uh, about science and STEM uh, sciences uh, within the Polish uh, society. So that was at uh, some of that news conference just a little bit ago. Again, here's a live look from our Space Coast here from our Launch Credit Union camera. We know that launch is set for a little after 9 a.m. coming up on June 8th. We're going to take a break here on Fox 35 News Plus, but we'll be right back in two minutes. 